We're on. Okay, it's uh, March 20th, 715. We are in the second floor conference room. We'll call to order the City of Brainerd Personnel and Finance Committee meeting, and we'll start with introductions. Kara Terry, Ward 1. Jennifer Britton, City Administrator. Connie Hillman, City Finance Director. Kevin Stooney, Alderman Large. Chris Schubert, HR Director. Trent Hawkinson, Brainerd Public Utilities Operations Manager. Mike Festival, Police Chief. Dispatch. And Gabe Johnson, Chair of the Committee. We have three items today. The first one is to consider Step 5 wage for line worker job offer. Okay. Trent, if you want to go to that and I'll go to the other side. So, good evening. So, to start off with, um, back in February, the Council had authorized us to go out and advertise for a journeyman line worker. We did that. We received 17 applications. Nine of them met our minimum qualifications, and we asked four of them to come in for an interview. After the interview process, we offered the position to Dallas Morehouse. Dallas actually worked for the city before. Um, he worked at BPU 2014 to 2015 in that time frame. So we are very familiar with him. He did the best in the interview. And at this time, um, we negotiated the wage with him. He said that step four would be going backwards for him and he asked for step five. Based on his 15 years of experience and also working at BPU where he's familiar with our system and he is also um, knows our safety requirements, staff feels that the step five wage is warranted for him. Trent, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I'm really here to ask, answer any questions you have. I can speak to his character since he has worked for us. He's a stand-up guy. He fits well with the crews. He worked with us in that 2014-2015 time frame, right as we were taking over the hydro facility. So he was an integral part of that process, so he knows the ins and outs of the interconnections to the hydro dam, which is something that will take us some time to teach a new person that historically, journeyman line workers that were um, tapping for a pool of applicants don't have that kind of background hydro and stuff like that. So it's a win there for sure. I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. I make a motion to approve the hiring of Dallas Morehouse as a journeyman line worker at step five, which is $48.38 per hour, subject to successful completion of the pre-employment hiring process. And I will second. All right, any other discussion or any questions? All right, thanks. Thank you. Then we'll vote, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, that motion carries. Next up, uh, adopt, consider, or consider adopting a resolution supporting public safety union disability legislation. Who's got this one? Oh, I'm the lucky person. All right, let's, let's hear all about it. Okay. The League of Minnesota Cities is urging its members to adopt a resolution in support of the public safety duty disability legislation. Um, in your packet was a sample resolution that you could go through. A little bit of history about this. Um, the League of Minnesota Cities is advocating for the state to partner with employers and public safety personnel to opt optimize first responder wellness and to curb the number of employees leaving the profession due to a permanent disability. Part of the legislation would address an issue that we have, um, it's currently in state law, that if they get this permanent disability, they also get health insurance paid for them and their dependents until they're age 65. So in here, um, in your packet, we included some information, the county prepared an analysis to show you what the, it has cost the city of Brainerd alone since this law went into effect and we've had people. Um, over this course of time, we had two individuals that had the duty disability. The one individual um, was, I think, from 2014 to 2018, somewhere in that time frame. That's why those costs were higher in those years. But since then, it's just one person. So you can see how much that actually costs us. Um, and I don't want to minimize. I feel sorry for these gentlemen. I mean, we try to take care of our home. We really do. But what we're trying to say is the state of Minnesota, you have an unfunded mandate here. And please, if you're going to make us do these things, help us support it. So the other part of this is if um, this continues, it's also going to cause issues with our police and fire plan for para. Right now, the employer's contribution rate is 17.7% .7 of gross salary. So if that fund is not stable, they're going to ask us to increase our contribution for that too. So it's going to cost us more money. So at this point, we're asking um, for the council to adopt a resolution supporting statewide policies and resources for public safety, mental, and physical injury education, prevention, and treatment. And I so move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? 
I, I read this fact sheet here, city issue fact sheet that the league put up. And it's 80% of the claims are related to PTSD. And, and God bless all these people. It's not, I'm not worried about the officers or the fire, but I mean, I am worried about that. I care for them. But it says 39% of the claims are from outside Minneapolis and St. Paul. So is that the opposite of saying 61% of the claims are in just two towns in this state? Like this looks like it would just be a huge outstate subsidizing two towns that can't take care of their own police forces, and I don't think it's our responsibility. So I, I'm going to vote no on it. So you're going to vote no? Yeah. You think that the city should continue to pay for the health insurance, and we may need to continue to pay for in that? At um, $20,000 a year compared to how much taxes would go up to fund just, just two towns, mm -hmm. I think our taxpayers are probably better off paying the I, I see it from another perspective, but I definitely see where you're coming from too, Gabe. Um, I just look at the long-term costs that the city alone is facing, and that's just one person. We have 26 sworn police officers. We have two full-time firemen. That's all that pertains to it does not pertain to the volunteers. Mm -hmm. but it definitely could cost us a lot more if there was a major issue here too. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Aye. And the third issue before us today is John Davis, police chief. What know about that? Yeah. So on Jan, or excuse me, on March 6th, the council created a work group to oversee the police chief interview and promotion recommendation process. Um, when we created that work group, we had told the council that there was two individuals that had applied. Um, that work group was formed and interviews were conducted. The work group recommends to promote Deputy Chief John Davis to the police chief position. This promotion would be effective June 3rd, that is the day after Chief Bestel's retirement. And to, um, excuse me, Deputy Chief Davis has agreed to start at step three of the police chief wage grid. Nice move. I second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Pull the same side. No. There was a second part of that, um, also to do an internal um, only process for the Oh, we'll include that upstairs, yeah. So, other than that, that was it. Okay, anything else to come for us? Not with that, we're adjourned. Yeah, Kara, I just read this. All right. Okay. Yeah, we so we're okay with not having... That's, that's exactly what I said.